Earlier this week, I created a 3D design for the variometer radio using the ferret ring. I got a few inquiries how the Q factor looks for the ferret ring variometer versus the straight line ferret rod variometer. So today I decided to do a Q test, a Q factor test using this Q meter that I got from China. It's a DIY Q meter. Uh, it's made using the ring down method to measure the Q of a coil and a capacitor combination. Basically the Q of the LC resonance circuit. So to do the test you need to hook up a capacitor as well as a coil. So the Q meter will be able to tell you what is the frequency it's resonating at and the Q factor. First let's test the ferret ring one. To do the test we need to pair it up with a very high Q factor fixed capacitor. I got this type of service mounted device SMD fixed capacitor that is a Q factor of more than 10,000. This one is 560 PF. I'll share the link on my YouTube description where you can find it in eBay. If you click through those links, you will not get a price change, but uh, it will help me to support my work. So thanks a lot. So the ferret ring were all inserted inside and we got a Q factor of around 280. When the ferret ring start to pull out of the coil, the Q drops gradually uh, until everything is out at around 164 Q. And this is pretty constant. We can repeat and get the same type of measurement. 280 all in and when you pull it out it will go back to around 160 all out. A lot of you ask me how I can cut the ferret ring in half without breaking it like glasses. Uh, I don't need to because I got this half ferret ring from the online shopping site in China and it's quite flat so I just need to find some way to secure it into my uh, setup here. Let me show you what is the ferret ring like. So it's like this one, it's very cut very nicely. Uh, the initial permeability is around 2000, 2000 UI. Uh, so the material name is called PC40. I think you can find a lot of this in Amazon with PC40 material. So next let's switch it to a lower capacitor, 150 PF. 150 PF, also the 10,000 Q surface mounted fix the capacitor. So let's test the Q factor. When it's all out, Q factor is around 170. Uh, when it's all in, it rises to around 210. And then this can be repeated. Okay, 170 to 210, not bad. The Q factor doesn't drop as expected when the ferro ring is pulled or out. Next, let's test the strict variometer using the ferro rod with a special material called R40C1 manufactured in China. It goes from a very high Q factor of around 310 down to a very low Q factor of 275. So it's, it's much better than the ferret ring. And that was using the high band 150 PF paired capacitor. 
uh, the SMD, same type of SMD, IQ 10,000Q fixed capacitor. Now I'm switching to the lower band using a, uh, a larger fixed capacitor, 560 PF, also the high Q 10,000 Q SMD type of fixed capacitor. So let's see. When it's all in, the uh, Q is around 315. When it's all out, Q drops to around 200. All right, so 315, 316, all the way down to 192, something like that. So now we've switched the forward volt to the more common PC40 forward volt. The initial U is 2000, uh, and it goes with a lower Q, 269, 270, and all the way to 180. And this ferret material is much cheaper than the R40C1, so that's why the Q factor is also not that high. So we were using this 560 PF for the low band. Now let's switch to the high band, 150 PF. Uh, it's a fixed capacitor of 10,000 Q factor, very high Q factor. So let's pair it up, connect the terminal from the Q meter to both the capacitor and the coil. So it forms an LC resonance circuit. You see the Q meter is able to tell the frequency when you move the ferret rod in and out. And for this high band, we are seeing a low Q of 186 when it's all pulled out and a high quality of 245 when it's all in. Now in both cases, the Q factor of the ferret rod seems to outperform that of the ferret ring. Uh, however, I still love to uh, create a ferret ring radio because it can tune much smoother. Uh, the gear ratio can be higher and it's a good project if you want to experiment and understand more about how crystal radio work. So that's all for today. If you like my video, please like, subscribe and send to your friends to watch too. If you want to support me and like my work, there are many ways you can support me, either by clicking the PayPal link to buy me a cup of coffee, or join my Patreon account to subscribe for my channel materials. You'll get extra materials like the original designer files from Fusion 360, so you can customize your design. Also, much more extra information I will be posting on the Patreon site. Or you can go to the links I provided to purchase the components you need to make this type of crystal radio, including the forward ring, mist wires, detectors, diodes, MOSFET, and even the 3D printer. If you click those links, you won't see a price increase. The price will be the same to you but it will mean a lot to me and I will be able to uh, receive your support to allow me to continue to create great content about Crystal Radio. My dream is to innovate the making of Crystal Radio using new technologies, new materials, new detectors. Whether you call it a Crystal Radio or not, it's still a magical device that allows you to listen to radio without power without battery, without amplification. If you've got a good signal, the signal quality is good, then listening to crystal radio is not too far away from listening to hi-fi uh, radios. It's crystal clear, and that's why I'm enchanted to spend more time on this hobby, crystal radio. See you later. Bye now.